August is over, so let's talk about the books that I read last month. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I was very displeased with the quality of books that I read. I've also like not had great success in the last two months in having any five star reads. So I padded my TBR, even though I don't follow a TBR, for the month of September with books that I think that I am going to enjoy. But this month, no different than July, we, we didn't have great success. I read five books. It started off pretty strong and then we slid downhill from there. So up first, I borrowed a book from Libby it's called What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. In this book, we follow three main characters, Naomi, Cassidy, and Olivia. The three girls are childhood friends who spent the summer that they were 11, like roaming the woods, playing this game called the goddess game. They believed in magic up until the point where Naomi's brutally attacked and stabbed 17 times. Now the girls do successfully put away the man who did the stabbing or so Naomi believes. So for decades, these three girls have been harboring the secret that maybe it wasn't actually the man who they identified who did the stabbing and caused Naomi's life to like follow this really crazy trajectory. Where we pick up, we have Naomi who's trying to figure out what actually happened to her in the woods 22 years ago. So here's a couple of things that I noted after I finished the book. First things first, this book not broken into chapters. That made it incredibly hard for me to find a stopping point. Now, if you have a Kindle, you know that at the bottom, it will tell you time left in chapter, time left in book, what page number you're on. Mine is always set to time left in chapter, but because there are no chapters, it just said four hours left in chapter. And I was like, um, how do I find a stopping point? There are like section breaks so that you can find a stopping point, but it was very, very hard to note. The writing style, the dialogue, the characters all immediately captured me. I was very, very, very happy with this book. I would classify Naomi as kind of an unreliable narrator. I mean, she was stabbed 17 times when she was a child. She literally has no idea what's going on. That was still fun for me though, because I do enjoy a good unreliable narrator. I felt like as I was going through this book that the twists just kept coming. And some of them were like, okay, yeah, I suspected that, or I, I knew that was gonna happen. But some of them I was like, whew, okay. I did not find the ending to be something that I would consider a clean ending. I feel like like there were loose ends that could have been tied up. I had questions at the end that were unanswered and therefore I could not give this a five star. This was more of a four star read for me. I enjoyed reading it a lot. I definitely thought about it while I was at work and I was supposed to be working. I was thinking about this book. Predictable, had surprises, very much enjoyed it. Probably will read more from Kate Alice Marshall. Now I'm gonna blame this next book as the reason why I only read five books in the month of August. Up next, I read Court by Tracy Wolf, which is Crave Volume 4. These books, I literally don't know how to describe them because they are so long that it feels like I've read three different books after I've only read one of them. This book was almost a thousand pages long. It, like I said, it's the fourth book of the Crave series, so we're following Hudson, Grace, Jackson, Flint, 800,000 main characters. We're picking up where we left off. Flint's boyfriend's dead. Jackson's unrecognizable. Hudson's doing his Hudson thing where he's building up walls between him and Gray. It's very angsty, very teen, very YA. I still enjoyed it. it. It's more of an average series for me, but because of my like Twilight loving self, anything that involves like vampires and it's YA, I'm, I'm gonna keep reading it until the end. Like I said, these books are so fucking long that there's no way for you to be able to be like, this happened, this happened, this happened. It's like, well, this happened, 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 just on and on and on because it's never ending. I don't feel like I can successfully describe what all happens in this book, so I'm not going to. Basically, one of the key plot points is that Cyrus took Katmir and has all of the students and faculty at Katmir being held hostage at the vampire court. And that's like the key plot point. I did see a TikTok quite a while ago that described books like this as like a CW show where it's not exactly good, but you can't look away. And that's exactly what Crave is for me. It's like the Vampire Diaries, but not great, you know? I don't know, I, I just, I don't know what it is. Something in this keeps me coming back for more. Even though we have all hell breaking loose every five pages, you know, I I don't know. I have given every single book in this series a three star rating and this one's no different. It's average for me, each book ends and I think I'm gonna be like, okay, that's it for me. And then I keep coming back for more. There's something in it, I don't know. She knows what she's writing, I'll tell you that. I just, there's one minor plot point 
in this series that I want to see if it pans out, so I have to keep reading. That's basically it. Three stars. Moving on. Oh, I borrowed that via Kindle Unlimited. God, my knee pits are so sweaty from sitting crisscross. It's hot in here. Okay, we have the book club pick. If you didn't know, now you know. I have a book club with some of my gal pals. It's called the Murder Robe Book Club. We do not condone murder, for those of you who are wondering. It's just something that is a fun thing to do. We wear really luxurious and elegant robes to our meetings. I can insert a picture of me wearing mine. For, for purposes of this Murder Row book club. So my friend Kelly picked out our book this month. She actually had us vote on what we wanted to read and we voted on The Family Across the Street by Nicole Trope. This is one of the only physical books that I read this month. Um, bought it via Amazon because I didn't know where else to look for it and when you need something fast, Jeff Bezos it is. So this book has main characters Logan, Catherine, Gladys, and the bad guy and we rotate through each of their POVs. Basically Goodreads describes this and the way that Goodreads describes it is not at all how it goes. So they're like, sometimes the most perfect families are hiding the most terrible secrets. How well do you know the people next door? There's a line about like the new family that's in the neighborhood not going to barbecues and that literally has no point in the story. It doesn't make any sense. So this book, like I said, rotates through each character's perspective on the hottest day of the summer. It takes place in Australia, so we're circling through each point of view. We have Gladys, who's the nosy neighbor. Logan is the delivery driver. Catherine is the person who the events are happening to. So she's the victim and then the bad guy. And it's the tale's kind of woven from each of their perspectives, which I really like. I think it's more along the lines of following your gut. So Catherine and her children are being held hostage in their house by this bad guy. We have no idea who he is. I personally suspected that it was one of the neighbors who was playing a role in what was happening in the story, but you find out that that is not, that's not true. It, it kind of rotates through each perspective to keep you guessing as to who the bad guy is. Gladys and Logan, so the nosy neighbor and the delivery driver, are suspicious about what's happening in Catherine's house for the entire day. So Gladys is nosy, she looks out her window, sees that the children haven't gone outside to play. Logan attempts to deliver a computer that needs signed for at her house. She won't answer the door, she won't let him in. She won't even open the door to sign for the package. So. Logan and Gladys are like, no, something is off, something's wrong, we have to figure out what's going on. And they just keep circling back through trying to figure out what's happening. For lack of content warning, I did retract a star from my rating because children are hurt both physically and mentally in this book, and I did not like that. Typically, I would have retracted many more stars, but the end of the book kind of shows the path of helping to repair these children. So the consensus of the book club is that there were a lot of plot holes. The story will, kept, will catch you by surprise in the end, I think. All of us kind of agreed that we did not see the ending coming. Like I said, for the longest time, I was convinced that there was some sort of affair going on, and I ended up giving this three stars. I am, as the ladies describe me, the professional book reviewer. So yeah, three stars for me. Everybody else gave it a four. After I finished The Family Across the Street, I picked up Credence by Penelope Douglas. If you watched my every book on my Kindle Unlimited list video up here, you'll know that I was very reluctant to describe this book, but I am going to tell you what Goodreads says, and then I'll tell you what my thoughts are. So we follow our characters, Tiernan, Jake, Noah, and Caleb. They are step family members. So Tiernan is the only child of this famous film producer and his starlet wife. She's grown up with all this wealth and privilege, but she's never really been loved by her parents because they're so obsessed with each other that they just didn't have any love to spare for her. She is shipped off to schools and camps and all that fun stuff as soon as she's old enough to be sent off to these schools and camps and everything. But no matter where she goes, she can't escape her feelings of loneliness and she can't escape the fact that her family's fame is going to follow her no matter where she goes. So her father in the beginning succumbs to his terminal illness and her mother goes with him. Tiernan realizes and recognizes in herself that she should feel devastated that her parents are gone, but she just doesn't. Enter her uncle, Jake, who is her father's estranged stepbrother who's living in this remote area in Colorado. He's the only living relative that Tiernan has, so she's given the choice by him to either come with him to his remote land in Colorado, or she can stay with her parents, I guess, assistant. She's two months shy being 18 so I don't I guess that's why they're giving her the choice because she's technically almost of age so she chooses to go and live with her uncle 
and his two sons, those are Noah and Caleb. And from there, she kind of learns that these men are gonna have a say in what she does and what she chooses no matter, no matter what. She also learns that lines can very easily be blurred when you are the only ones there and no one else is watching. So dark romance, taboo relationships, age gap relationship, I guess reverse harem if you wanna get really into it. That's kind of the description that Goodreads gave. I went into this knowing, okay, taboo romance, I read the Goodreads synopsis after I'd finished reading the actual book. So I guess in hindsight, I if I had read the synopsis on Goodreads first, I would have expected way more plots. Like we could have developed and fleshed out characters much more than what actually happened in the book. It was a smut fest and that's okay. I think that we hit about around the 15% mark before we had the first like non-consensual sexual act happen. Let's talk about some other thoughts that I have. So the way that the author wrote Tiernan to me was weird. She was so emotionally stunted and I get it, but like she never developed as a character. Nor did Caleb, nor did Noah, nor did Jake. No one develops emotionally. It was very weird. I guess she, like I said, wrote her as emotionally stunted, but for me, I was like, what the fuck is going on with this girl? Like, why is she so weird? Why is she so weird? And again, like I, like I said before, we hit about the 15% mark before we encounter the first scene where it's clear that consent was not given. It just feels like scene after scene after scene, there are instances where Tiernan is not consenting to what's happening to her. It very much gave Stockholm Syndrome even though they're not really holding her hostage there. She just can't get away because it's winter. Each relationship that she has with the three men feels abusive in some way. Her uncle, it's like, okay, yeah, there's a huge age gap. Noah is like emotionally manipulative. And then Caleb is kind of even physically uh, abusive to her. So it, I, I wasn't really on board with all of that. Overall, I really couldn't stop reading the book. I did read it in one weekend. Um, so something about it kept me going, but I did end up giving it two stars, but I wanna read some quotes that like stood out to me as like, okay, this is why I'm giving it two stars. Not to mention, she's quiet, boring, and a little pathetic. I can't torture someone who won't fight back. If you go, he says, I don't know if I'll be able to get you alone again. I turn my head looking at him. They're very protective of their property. Which ick, gross. She's a, she's a teenage girl, like she's not their property. She's supposed to be in their care. I turn and head up the stairs, hearing Noah's angry bark behind me. You're a Vanderberg here he shouts if you give that asshole a piece of ass i swear to god i'll make sure you don't sit for a week this was w only one instance of these men being obsessed with the idea of spanking her my personal favorite your parents never gave you anything sweet that's why you're not <laughs> anyway moving on the last book that i read this month was a physical book that my husband bought for me so i'm not really going to talk about fear thy neighbor by fern michaels too much in this book because i do have another book that i'm going to dedicate entirely to the books that my husband bought for me so fear thy neighbor by fern michaels is the first book that i've ever read by this author this book follows allison marshall who is 29 and grew up in the foster care system she's a nomad but she's finally ready to find a place to call home which brings her to Palmetto Island in Florida where she finds a beach house that is reasonably priced for her to buy because she's worked hard and invested her money appropriately and now has money to buy a house in in cash provided that the price is right so she finds this beach cottage the price is right she reaches out to the agent and ends up purchasing the home but as time goes on and I feel like we only cover like five days in this book she kind of discovers that the people on the island aren't exactly what they seem and we're kind of trying to figure out if she's gonna make it to the next day alive or not book starts off incredibly slow I feel like I was at the 30% mark before we even had anything interesting happen. I feel like I was 75% in before I even realized what was going on. So writing, not great. I gave it one star and moved on into September because I finished this on August 31st. So I'm not gonna talk more about Fear Thy Neighbor because like I said, fully dedicated video coming up with the books that my husband bought for me. Instead, let's wrap it up and talk about my final stats for the month. So like I said, I read five books this month. I read approximately 2,273 pages and read every single day. I did not listen to any audiobooks, so I have no audiobook statistics for you. I averaged about 73.3 pages per day and 
and my average rating for the month was even less than last month, sitting solid at 2.6. Obviously the best book that I read this month was What Lies in the Woods. That was a really, really fun thriller, mystery kind of novel to start my month off with. Hopefully September, you know, kicks off good and hopefully I can figure out what? I hope that you all can hear her just panting on my leg. I hope that by padding my TBR with the thrillers that I want to read this month that I'll actually have a higher than three star average for the month next month, or this month rather, because it is September as I'm filming this. So yeah, that's gonna be it from me for today. I look forward to hearing about what you guys read in the comments down below in August. Tell me what your least favorite book was. Obviously mine was Fear Thy Neighbor. And otherwise, I'll see you next week.